Okay, I think we got everybody here. We, we get this thing kicked off. Uh, my name is Greg Arthur. I'm the county commissioner for this precinct. We wanted to thank, ma'am. You got to turn it up louder. Okay, maybe I'll get on. <laughs> All right, is that a little better? Yes. All right. We want to thank Brother Ryan and the folks here at Rainbow Church for hosting this event. We really appreciate that. I'm going to ask Brother Ryan to lead this off with a prayer. Don't get excited. We're not going to let him preach or pass a collection plate. He's just, going to, he's just going to say a prayer. Ask the Lord to bless this service. Uh, before I pray, uh, I've been already been praying that the Lord will direct us tonight and that this will be a orderly meeting tonight. And what I would like to do is once they open it up for discussions, I've got a microphone. And I'll, if you'll raise your hands in an orderly fashion, I'll bring that microphone by each and every person. Try to be remember what somebody else might have the same question that you have, because we're probably only limited to a certain amount of time. And I would like to thank Brother Greg and Judge Knight and all of those that are coming on behalf of our road construction that we need to do. So if you would, let's bow and ask the Lord to bless this meeting. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Father, first of all, we come to you in your house and in your presence. And we ask that you speak to our hearts tonight, Father. Help us to understand what they have come to tell us, Father. And then, Father, I do pray, Father, for the speediness of the progress on this bridge construction. And so, Father, we just pray that it is in your will and that you just help us to remember who you are. We ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, start the program. Ms. Murphy had, uh, she kind of organized this, and she'd like to have a couple of minutes, and then we'll turn this thing over to <laughs> Judge Knight. All right, everybody. I'm Nancy Murphy. Everybody's seen me on Facebook. First off, I want to welcome everybody. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, we thank the church. We thank Tech Stock, Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Arthur, Mr. Knight. Uh, special thanks is to Tammy and Bo Smith for all their input helping me. Bo Potter, Vanessa with Blue Bonnet News, Richard Hemberg, Barbara Ferguson, Facebook, people that's reached out to me, Big Mike. These are the people that put the flowers that you seen at the stores when I took them by. They were kind enough to allow us to do this. Big Mike with Mike Barbecue, Valero, the Dollar Stores, Romare and Ryan, Fuel Max, and just like the preacher said, we're in God's house and let's be respectful when you call upon to get your question and answer. That's when we don't want everybody talking over I know we're all upset, we're all a little angry, but let's do the best we can get to get answers. We do have a bucket in the back for the pastor's church, for this Rainbow Church. If anybody wants to donate in there to help with the electricity and everything that's going on here tonight and giving us a place to have this meeting. Thank you all. I'm going to turn this over to Judge Knight, and he'll introduce the text up, folks. And uh, I just want, I'll be through the, my part of the program, but at the end of the program, or when text up through, I'll be around as long as you want to to answer any questions about local issues. Uh, so feel free to, I'll be here as long as you are. I want me to be. I brought my ropes. If y'all need to use it on Greg, just let me know. Okay? <laughs> I'm Jay Knight, uh, I'm your county judge. And uh, it's a good thing we have a chance to visit. Thank you all for all coming. Thank you for your, your concerns and your questions. And thank you for being here. And uh, government moves slow. I hate to say that, I'm, I'm not a patient man. But one thing I did learn in the last 10 years is government moves slow and there's reasons for it. It's not any special interest. It's not anything that uh, 
you can do by well jumping up and down and stomping your foot. It takes time. Plans take time. Engineering takes time. Permission <laughs> takes time. But that's just part of it. it uh, I deal with it every day. Trust me, I had blonde hair before I started this job. <laughs> it just now it's turning loose and turning white. That's okay. The uh, in the last ten years, I've I've had the opportunity to work with four four district engineers. Now, district engineers over uh, I can't remember how many counties exactly, but the total district size is, is very very large. And uh, they're based out of Beaumont. But locally we have, we used to call them resident engineer years ago, and now they're just our, our engineer. I guess I'll get the appropriate name here shortly. But um, Mark Gonzalez is the fourth district engineer I've had the opportunity to work with. And I will tell you this, he is the most truthful district engineer I have ever had the chance to sit down with work on plans for uh, any transportation issue all the way from the well the novel idea of what it needs to be through the inception period and then also consideration of funding he's always been truthful to me he's brought his team with him tonight and uh well, roberto rodriguez is our local engineer we used to call him a resident engineer years ago for liberty county and then sarah dupre Works. Uh, she used to be the right hand lady for the district engineer. Uh, now I think she really runs it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> John Yadlet is also here with us. She's the public information lady, sitting next to Sarah. And then Lisa Collins is a registered professional engineer, and she works on special projects. At least that's what she's done with me in the past. So when one of these monsters comes up and we have to have something done in a hurry something done that's extraordinary we turn to Lisa and look for the extraordinary thing to happen but it's all led by Mark Gonzalez right over here and uh, as I've said all the ones I've worked with in the last 10 years some of them come and go pretty quick Mark has been here for a while and I've really enjoyed my time with him he will tell you the truth no matter how much you might say it hurts I'll echo that hurt with you, but he will tell you the truth on time. He will tell you the truth on what it's going to cost, what the engineering uh, aspects are for this project, and it's going to be twofold. So don't think you're not hearing just one piece. You'll hear two two parts to it. Okay. So uh, let's sit and listen intently. If you have questions, I'm sure that the uh, the text doc folks would be happy to visit with you. Or answer your questions here and I know I'm gonna sit with Greg y'all don't need a rope for me I'm gonna be here okay so it's, uh, well, if you have any questions after the meeting just feel free to come up and visit okay thank you all right good evening everybody um, as Judge Knight said my name is Martin Gonzalez I'm the district engineer for the Beaumont district with TxDOT and the area, as uh, Judge Knight was saying, we, I cover eight counties. I'm responsible for eight counties in the Beaumont District, which includes Liberty, Liberty County, Chambers County. I have Jefferson, Orange, Hardin, uh, Tyler, Jasper, and Newton. I think I caught all eight. Um, did I get them all? Yeah. All right, thank you. So with me tonight, like uh, Judge Knight was saying, Lisa Collins is my Director of Transportation Planning and Development. So she is her, she and her team are the ones responsible for the designs that we do and what our long-term solution is gonna be for this location. Uh, Tanya Avila is our public information officer and Sarah Dupre is our management analyst. Like uh, Judge Knight said, she, she is the one that kind of keeps me out of trouble and talks to, to a lot of the folks to, to make sure that I don't say anything that's gonna be incorrect. So, and then Roberto Rodriguez is my area engineer. He oversees Chambers and Liberty County. So he is your local area engineer that if you see any kind of issues with our construction projects, maintenance projects, things like that, those folks report to, to Roberto. So really appreciate the opportunity to come out here and visit with you all. And we did get a whole lot of the questions that everybody asked and 
I will be sure to cover everything that was asked on these on these sheets of paper. But obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what we're here today. Uh, if you're here for like specials on barbecue or anything like that, there's a wrong meeting for that. So, uh, so we're going to talk about FM 787. And as we all know, in May when we had those those heavy rains that we received. Uh, early May, unfortunately, we we lost the approach lab on the west side of the 787 bridge over the Trinity River. Okay, so what ended up happening? Is it okay if I take this microphone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry, because I, I don't like to just. Yeah. So I kind of like to move around a little bit, but uh, so what ended up happening? Sorry, because this kind of got in the way a little bit. So what ended up happening is. As, as I mentioned, we all know we got a lot of rain and the Trinity River uh, has been flowing the way that it's gonna flow for years, right? And we all know that this has been an issue that has been ongoing for over 40 years in this whole area. And I understand the frustration and I share your frustration with what has happened to this point. So I cannot speak to the decisions that were made prior to me getting here, I can't. So I was not privy to those conversations or to the decisions that were made prior to me getting here, but I can tell you what we're gonna do moving forward. So what ended up happening early May, with all the flooding that we got, we had a lot of, of rain, the Trinity was very high, it was flowing, and what ended up happening as our crews were out there monitoring the road and taking a look at, at all of the uh, locations where we have bridges, because that's something that we do with every rain event, every heavy flood event, uh, our crews go out there and take a look. So what ended up happening is our crews went out there and I think they did an outstanding job in the fact that they saw the metal beam guard fence, the posts on the west end were exposed. They were starting to erode. So our crew made the decision. They were like, hey, we need to close this road down. So they shut it down. And I thought that was the right decision at that time because that night we lost the approach lab. So what ended up happening is uh, we closed it down. The approach lab, obviously, like I said, there was erosion that caused the embankment to, to wash away. And the approach lab, not the bridge, the bridge, is, the bridge was fine. Uh, the approach lab fell into the Trinity, right? So what we typically do when something happens like that we do emergency maintenance contracts. So with an emergency maintenance contract, we get out there as quickly as we can. We get the designers to go look at, at previous as built and we try to put the, the bridges back to the condition they were in, right? And that's what we were in the process of doing. We had gotten our, our bridge division, took a look at what was going on and they determined we need to add a couple more spans to the bridge so that to help with, with any future erosion. Plus, we were doing some temporary, some some shoring, some, uh, uh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Sheet piling. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, you want to come work for me over here? <laughs> All right. So we did some sheet piling. That's that's was part of the design to help with any further uh, erosion in that area, right? Uh, now keep in mind, anything that we were doing right there was a temporary fix. That's that's what our intent was because. Uh, Lisa and I talked about that, and our goal is to realign this roadway. That's what needs to happen here. When did so you do so I, I'm going to get right there to that. Let, let me give you all, all the information, and then uh, I'll open it up to any kind of questions that you all have. So what we're going to end up doing initially with the design, again, adding two spans. We were going to add two spans to the west end of the bridge, uh, be able to repair that approach slab, and then we're going to do the sheet piling to help with any erosion. That was on the west side. What ended up happening is we were in the process of getting to award the contract to, to the contractor that we selected. So it was discovered that there was additional cracking on the east side, which the east side is what was repaired after Harvey, right? I know we're all familiar with how long that took to do those repairs. So as we were doing that, the, the cracking that was visible started growing. So it got, it got wider. Uh, we saw some additional settling, so we called Bridge Division and Maintenance Division, and they came down here to, to take a look at it. <clears throat> and they were going to see what is it that we can do to help on that side. 
We sent our crews, our maintenance crews, our special jobs crew went out there to look at it. And some of you that have gone to visit the location, you see that the, the asphalt's been kind of torn up a little bit. The reason for that is because our special job crew went out there and we were trying to see if we could repair it ourselves in house. So that's what they were doing. They were tearing it up to see how bad the, the damages were and assess whether or not we could make those repairs ourselves. So when Bridge Division came out here and looked and they saw that there's, there's a significant amount of settling and there's some issues with, with the, uh, the wall that was built after Harvey, the decision was made, we need to add uh, spans on the east side as well. So that obviously takes a little bit of time to design. So what I did is I canceled the award of the west side so that I could, I could combine the two and get a better price because obviously it's better to have one contractor that's gonna do the work that, that is gonna be going back and forth and be able to take care of everything at one time versus having two different contractors under two different timelines. So, so that was my decision at that particular time uh, because again, one of the things that I have to do, I have to try to, to do my best to be a good steward of the taxpayer's money and try to make the right decisions when it comes to that. So designing anything like Judge Knight said, it takes a little bit of time. It's not something that is just quick that you can just kind of draw on a piece of paper and then throw it up there. So there's elevations that we do, there's bearing seat elevations, there's, there's drill shaft design that we need to do to make sure that um, instead of driving pile, we need to do drill shafts with skin friction to make sure that we're going deep enough. And it all depends on, on the soil that we have, the depth that we need. Uh, we need to add some super elevation uh, because that curve, I know a lot of you are familiar with the curve that we have on the east side. Um, that's something that we need to look at when we're designing this thing. We can't just leave it flat. We have to add some super elevation. So with that, our designers were finishing all that. Uh, we actually received everything uh, today. Actually, it was last night. And they're putting everything together. Uh, my director of maintenance is the one that, that oversees the awarding of emergency maintenance contracts. And he's gonna put the packages together and we're gonna reach out to four contractors. The same four contractors that we reached out to in, in June, because uh, we're gonna award it in July. So that we can go ahead and uh, and have them tell us how long it's gonna take and how much it's gonna cost, right? Right now, our estimate, because we don't know exactly how much it's gonna be, we're, we're looking at anywhere in the range from eight to $11 million to do these temporary repairs, okay? Now keep in mind again, it's a temporary repair that is gonna add spans on the east side and the west side. And we're gonna be doing, uh, adding a longer approach slab on the east side to help with that cracking that that that, uh, that appeared on the east side with these with these additional uh, spans and the longer approach slab that's going to help bridge that okay again i can't say this enough this is only a temporary solution we're doing this because we realize that just putting the the sheet piling there is not going to help because the river is going to do what the river wants to do and if you look, anybody that's been in this area since, you know, the 50s, 60s, you know that the river has migrated already over the years, right? And I think we can all attest to the fact that Mother Nature is going to win every single time. So we should have made this decision a long time ago. But I can tell you we are doing that now. Um, again, I understand and I share your frustration because it, it's, it's not okay for, for us to have to go 39 miles out of the way, you know, on a detour. And, and I understand 39 miles if you go the south way, you've got 40 miles if you go the north way, and, and I understand that. And just know that we're actually working on this concurrently. So while we go and award this contract, the emergency maintenance contract, and we have, we're hoping to have the contractors go into work early September. I'm hoping that as soon as uh, we're able to award it, I get them turning their, from the, from the time they start turning dirt, 120 days from there is where they're gonna be completing the bridge to open it back up to the public, okay? So 120 days is about four months, right? So with that, keep in mind, we asked our staff to use a lot of precast elements and to use high yield, early strength concrete. So what that does is typically when you use concrete, you gotta wait so many days before it reaches the strength 
and then you can actually open it to or go to your next step. By using high, high yield early strength concrete, it actually lets us reach a 28 day hardness, typically in five to seven days. So, so from that standpoint, that's the reason why we're trying to expedite as much as we can. So weather permitting, we will be able to complete this in 120 days, okay? So again, the reason why we want to reach out to four contractors is because we want them to tell us, hey, I can finish it in three and a half months. I can finish it in three months. So as opposed to our regular contracts that we award for um, our regular construction lettings, we usually go lowest bidder on those, okay? But for emergency maintenance contracts, we're not required to do that. So I can actually take a look at it. We'll sit down with my director of maintenance and myself. We'll see what the bids come in at, what timelines they're giving us. And we're going with, with companies that are established, they, they have experience in, in building bridges, and that's what we wanna do. So that's why we're hoping that they can dedicate their time to getting this thing back up and running. So while this is going on, Lisa and her team is already, they're working on our long-term plan, which like I said, the long-term plan is to realign this road. <coughs> now, Lisa is working with the hydraulics and hydrology division. They're doing a, a geomorphology study for the Trinity, which tells us it's essentially, what it's doing is predicting where the river's gonna go, using a whole lot of stuff that a lot way smarter people than me use. So, but early on, with the conversations we've had with them already, the decision that we've talked about is to move in, move in the road from where it currently is, slightly to the north, where the, where the river goes north to south, okay? So I know that there's been some conversations back in 2018 after Harvey, there was a, a, a bit of a, of a study done to show what were some possible options to, to realign that road. There was, they explored an option of going all the way up to that railroad trestle that's up, you know, farther north. And I know a lot of people are like, that's, that's the way to go, that that's, makes sense. And we understand that. However, that impacts a whole lot of people. If I go all the way north, impacts a lot of properties. And then it takes a whole lot of distance for me to come back down to existing 787. So when we looked at this option, to keeping it fairly close to where the current alignment is, when you go from Romania right there, uh, and you have that, that curve, we're looking to straighten that slightly, and then go across, hopefully impact the least amount of property owners as possible, and then going across again, where the Trinity goes north and south, and then we come back down and tie in on the other side of 787. So, as far as timelines, we are looking to, we're working with FHWA, so that we can get that kind of considered as an emergency type contract as well. And Lisa, like I mentioned, and her team are already selecting consultants to, uh, to do the design for us. She's already working on getting somebody on board to do that. And uh, feel very confident of the group that she's, she's looking to bring on board. They're doing a great job for us in other projects. But once they get that done, our goal right now is to let the new project the long-term project by 2028, okay? So that means 2028, we have the new realignment, and then we would complete that new realignment by 2030, 2031, okay? Now, mind you, again, that's a tentative timeline. Um, if it's possible for us to expedite that, we're gonna take every chance we can to make that happen sooner. But right now, because we're trying to get everything lined out and we're trying to make sure that we stay as conservative as we can on the timeline, that's why we're going for 2028 to let the, the realignment. And then again, goes to construction and then uh, goes to construction in 2028. And then we finish it by 2030 or 2031. So one of the reasons why they can move faster and the reason why I'm saying, and I know some of you might be thinking, so what is it, 30 or 31? So something to consider is when you're doing a new location, they can go wide open, right? There's no interference from any traffic, anything else they have to worry about. Contractor can just come and go and, and do what they need to do. So a lot of times they can move fairly quickly. But keep in mind too, it's, it's bridges they're building. So in this particular location, what, what Lisa and I have discussed on this is that 
for a large part of it, we're gonna have to go elevate it, okay? Because we don't wanna have to be going at grade and then have the same problems happen to us later on. So even though we're looking to go on the, the portion of the Trinity that's going north to south, we're looking to also go elevated so that we can go over these properties as much as we can and then land where it makes sense, okay? So I'm letting you know kind of where our mindset is on that. Uh, again, is it a little bit more expensive? Yes, it is, than just doing a conventional at-grade road, but we truly feel that it's the better decision in this area, especially since we are so exposed to, to flooding and to, to water in this area, we wanna make sure we good, do a good product, okay? Um, Am I leaving anything out, Blue Boy? Okay. Let's see. So, I really appreciate everybody's questions that everybody put out here. Um, some of the questions, and I think I'm answering some of them as I've been giving y'all the update on this, uh, but I'll go over a lot of these questions. Uh, some of them are, are similar. But where will the new bridge be located? I mentioned slightly, our goal is to have it slightly north of where the existing one is. Um, estimated time of completion, I mentioned 2030, 2031. Will there be a temporary solution until the new bridge is completed? And that is what our emergency maintenance contract that we're doing right now is gonna accomplish that. Now we're gonna have to continue monitoring it, of course. Uh, this is not something that, that is just gonna, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you today that the temporary solution that we're doing is gonna be the end all be all that's gonna save everything. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that because I'd be lying to you if that was the case. We're gonna continue monitoring this thing every single time we get some significant rain and we're gonna monitor our roads because that's our job. We're gonna keep doing that. And like I said, I can't speak to what happened 40 years ago or what happened prior to me getting to this district. But if y'all wanna blame me for anything that happens moving forward, that's fine because those are my decisions that I'm making at this particular point. But we're gonna do our best to get this fixed. So I understand the frustrations and I really appreciate everybody's patience in this. And I understand that obviously this happened in May and we are now in August. And I'm telling you that, that four months from when we start turning dirt is when we'll have this finished. So I can understand the frustration with having something not, uh, not being available for eight months. But I do want you to know that my priority and my staff's priority is y'all safety. Y'all safety because you're the ones traveling this road. Amen. And so the way that we do these designs and the approach that I've taken over the four years that I've been in the district and the almost three years I've been the district engineer is I want every single design that we're doing for them to think that it was our families driving these roads. Because it is. In a way, it's our families that are driving this. So please just know that I know it's frustrating and I know that I would love to be able to just put a bridge up as quickly as possible. But I wanna do it right. I don't wanna just do it fast. So from that standpoint, again, I appreciate it. And I hope that y'all know anybody that has reached out to me, I've visited with you. My staff has visited with you and we're always open to talk, okay? So, and the reason why I'm here tonight is because I wanna make sure that you get all the information straight from the horse's mouth. I don't want anybody to make any assumptions or start spreading any rumors that they said this, text that said that, text that said this. I'm telling you, I am the head of the Beaumont District and what you're hearing from me, that's what we're doing, okay? So from that standpoint, I'll be happy to hand out some, uh, some business cards. A lot of you already have my, my phone number. I know I talked to some of y'all already. I'm not gonna name any names, I'm just kidding. No, but, uh, but, uh, but that's okay though, that's what our job is. We work for the public. That's what we do, okay? And, and yes, just like anybody else, I understand that it's frustrating. So we're doing our best. Our staff is doing the best they can to, to get this thing going. So uh, really appreciate y'all letting us be here tonight. Let me uh, keep answering some of these questions. Estimated time of the improved roadway bridge and the completion, like I mentioned already. Uh, the estimated cost, we don't have an estimated cost for the for the the complete realignment. We don't have that yet because it's still too early for us to be able to determine that. Once we get the consultant on board and they start doing the, the design and we look at exactly where we need to cross and what we need to do, then we'll be able to do a more accurate, an actual accurate estimate on, on the cost for that. Let's see. Concerned that because we're a smaller area that doesn't have lots of pull, 
and we will be low on priority lists. Since most jobs and hospitals are already a good distance away, the shutdown adds at least 30 minutes to the drive, not good during emergencies or low, low budgets. So I, I, I wanna tell y'all, um, even though it might not seem like it, and even though I may not live right here in, in Romare or Rye or any of these little communities in this area, I am part of this community. I got here four years ago, and everything that I do is for the Beaumont District. And everything that happens here is a priority for me. And we're busting our butt to make sure that we get the money that we need to get the right projects in this area. And we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep working at that. I know I've talked to, to Judge Knight. We've been working on, with the HGAC, uh, we're trying to get some of this money from Houston. Houston gets a whole lot of money. So guess what? Chambers and Liberty County are gonna start getting some of that money too. Um, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we recognize the growth in this area and we're gonna keep working at getting the, the money for this area so that we can put the right projects out here. For the North okay? area. Say again? For the North area. For every area. I have eight counties to look at. So, so these two counties, Liberty and Chambers, are part of the HGAC, the Houston Galveston Area um, Council. Thank you. Houston <laughs> Galveston Area Council. And so for a long time, we've been the little brother that didn't get a whole lot, right? So everybody knows kind of like if you come from a big family like I do, the run to the litter doesn't get a whole lot of food, right? They get left out. Well, I like to throw elbows when I'm at the table. So, cause I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get fed. So as you can see, I haven't missed a whole lot of meals. So that's the same approach that we take in getting, getting projects for this area. Okay, so we're gonna keep working at that. Um, let's see, why was the bridge not repaired properly and is it gonna be two lane or four lane? So, so it's tough. Again, this is a battle that's been, that has been fought for 40, 50 years. And yes, it's, it's very easy to see that different decisions could have been made a long time ago. And like I said, I can't speak to the decisions that were made in the past, but we can only move forward, okay? So um, as far as, is it gonna be a two lane or four lane? It's two lane. Uh, we're not widening this road yet. There are, there are no traffic projections to, to uh, warrant increasing this to a four lane facility. So this will still be a two lane project. Give me one second, sir. Okay. So, Romayer land, or sand and gravel, uh, resources and the bridge being out, and then the sand and rock are coming in, the hinders are going to the doctor, shop, and et cetera. And I understand, again, the, the frustration with having to do this detour. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm again. Sorry. I have to say something. You keep using the word frustration. It's hardship. It's hardship on every face that you see in here. And then some, because there's a lot that are not here. They're either still traveling from work, couldn't be here in time. Mm -hmm. They're either working night shift or they're elderly and can't see the drive at night to get here. It's hardship. Frustration is not the word. Right. I understand. Thank it's you. the truth. It's the truth for everyone you see here. Yes, ma'am. So explain why the east end is needing repair when it was just opened two to three years ago. Uh, all of that should have been properly repaired when it opened. It took almost two years for that repair. How are we to trust a temporary fix? Amen. So again, I've already covered that before, that it, it's, I'm not here to point fingers at what was done before. And we're not moving forward in a good way if we keep doing that. If that's what the conversation is going to be, that's, that's not what the intent of this tonight is. I'm trying to give you all information for what is going on and for what's gonna be coming in the future. So from that standpoint, I, I just really appreciate us taking a good step forward in a good direction. So uh, yes, ma'am. So one second, I know you had your hand up before. And so. The, 
This is not a major evacuation route. The 146 is, but not 787. Why do we get out? That's how we get out. I understand that. So there's designated evacuation routes, but 787 is not one of them. So our goal is to usually get people out from, from the coast north. And that's typically what we would do. Um, so we get people on I-10, get people on 90, get people on 69, get them out on our major areas. And then from that point, once we direct them north, we, we don't tell people you can turn left here, turn right here, they make that decision. Our job is to just get them away from the coast as quickly as possible. So that's the reason why. So, Ma'am, you had your hand up. So as I mentioned, as I mentioned, this is something that has been done for over 40 years. They made repairs. If you look at that area, if you're familiar with this area, there were similar repairs that were done for year after year after year, every time that something happened and the banks were eroding, that's what was going on. That's how it was fixed. So, so again, yes, those were the repairs that were made in the past. And were they the right decision at the time? At the time, the, the folks that made that decision, maybe they thought that was the right thing to do. So obviously, again, we, we understand that that was not the best strategy to use. So we, we put out through our public information office information on the bridges. That's what we do. That's what we do. So on different platforms, we do Facebook, we do X, we do Nextdoor, we do different, different platforms. So. Say again. Say that again. What is the long-term project? No, just the bridge period. No, ma'am. Again. And then where do we get our information? The from? long, the long. So again, anytime that y'all want to reach out to our offices, you can. You can reach out to Roberto Rodriguez at the area office. You can reach out to my office at the district office, and you can and get that's what that kind. So we a weather page, something. I mean, I called and asked, and I was told there's no information. Don't know. I'm like, right. is there a Facebook page? Is there something? No, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have somebody call you back. I never got a call back. If you have the name I of who you spoke Beaumont with, I called my office. Whoever answers your phone, called that office, and I said, what's going on with the bridge? <laughs> and somebody told me, I don't know. The engineers are working on it. I said, is there a web page I can go to to monitor it, something? Uh, I don't know. I'll have the engineer call you back. I have not heard from anybody. Okay. That was months ago. I okay. gave up. I called several times. And I said, oh, you'll get a call back. Nope, never got a call back. So if you have the phone number that you called and the person you spoke with, I would love I, to have that information. I have no idea. Whoever answers your phone at your office in We Baltimore, have a lot of people that offer answer phones back. I, I, so I don't know, without you telling me what number you called, I can't help you. That's that's the thing. You, it, And not everybody in my staff, if you call my Beaumont office, a Beaumont, my Beaumont receptionist doesn't know what's happening over here in Romania. That's not a fair question to her. So if you call the area office, which is Roberto Rodriguez, our local area that offices. Dayton, Liberty. And Liberty. And Liberty, I mean. I'm yes, ma'am. I call that office too. Okay, so then if that's if that is what happened, then we need to make sure that obviously you get a call back. You would get a call back from Roberto or somebody from our staff. A web page would be nice, is what I'm saying. I think that's what everybody would like is a web page where they could just go in and say, this is where you're at. And you probably wouldn't get near as many calls. So again, I'm, I'm giving you all the information right now. I'm letting you know 
what's about to happen with this emergency maintenance contract. Once we get going, again, our goal is to start construction on the temporary repairs in September. Okay, from that point, like I said again, we're looking at 120 days from there, weather permitting to completion. If anything changes, if anything changes, then at that particular point, we will send some sort of update. Okay, I. I'm Sarah Dupree, um, management analyst. So um, I, I understand we just haven't Sorry, had. Sorry, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we just haven't had a whole lot of information to put out. We've been trying to put out as much as we can. Tony's been doing a great job um, on our Facebook page, X, which is formerly Twitter, um, Instagram, things like that, put, putting out what we do know. Like Martin said, we're just now getting all the information together to get our emergency contract going for that that like he said that's going to be going out next week to our contractors so we're trying to get as much information as possible we haven't had as much because we've been working so hard behind the scenes so whatever information we could put out we were but unfortunately we just didn't have a whole lot like he said we're trying to do it right we want to make sure that we do this right for y'all for our families as well so that's that's the reason behind that i know we've got a lot of hands going up everywhere so if we could just kind of get okay sir go ahead all right, this is simple. I, I totally agree and understand some things you're saying, and I have we can have every right in the world to feel the way they do. My bigger question is now, very present. We're under FEMA, we're also under the governor said that we were basically a disaster area. So we should qualify for at least Army Corps of Engineers and somebody can come out here and put up a temporary steel bridge, another good bridge, very easily done, and a more weight than we've ever put up to meet the weight limit on. My bigger question is, is why are we not doing that? Why is no one pursuing something where tomorrow morning or within a week, we could be driving that way? Because again, like I mentioned before, with- But you, you haven't mentioned anything about Army Corps. You haven't mentioned anything about a absolute fix. Fine, that's three months down, six months down the road, or you know, four or five years down the road. I'm not about something to be done in two weeks. Yeah, actually, if you get told Army Corps engineer, but, well, the other thing is, we got a very bad curve there. Every week somebody's knocking out. So even if you put that as a temporary basis, you're going to still either hit or die. I mean, so either way, I'm not hearing the real status quo. I'm not even satisfying the scenario. I'm seeing a disaster waiting to happen again. Okay. So as far as the acro bridges, like what you're referring to, those are effective where where the span is able to be added to. In this location, we have two areas that are currently failing. Not only that, but after, like I mentioned with the, the west side, when we had the approach side that, that fell in, that, that, first, that first interior bend continued to erode after the, the river was still going. So then what happened after that is it settled slightly. And I, you can see, I, I know a lot of people can see where, the, where that slab kind of did so. So putting an acro bridge like that at that location, that's not something that was feasible. And again, those spans are a lot are a lot larger. The reason why I say that is because I have explored those options, sir. So again, I don't I don't just put the things up without looking at options. So Thank yes sir. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's again why we're adding the two spans on that side and the approach lab to help with that. Yes, sir. I could be running around with this. I, I see y'all back yes, there. Yes, sir. Okay, I've got a couple of questions oh. that I think all of these people are probably going to have in their mind. You're going to build, you're going to repair what we have there, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, you're saying a little bit north from where we're, the bridge is now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, do you not think that in four years of waiting for our new bridge to come in, 
all this resource that you're spending on this repair, do you not think for one moment that in four years, we're not gonna get another storm? Well, that's why we're gonna monitor it constantly. Okay, and as you said earlier, before I lose my thought, that y'all were there to close our bridge. I'm, I, I'm sorry, but y'all were not. This man and this man right here, the day before the bridge collapsed, Bo Potter and Bo Smith went down there and viewed that west side. And they called, and I can back it up with the constables, that were out of Cleveland, because I've done talk to them, they called the constables to come out there, the sheriff department, and block both sides. Y'all did not come out there to that bridge, none of the workers, nobody, the day before that bridge collapsed. We, they shut this bridge down. That's the only thing that saved our life, is them two guys right there. Y'all did not show up and they can back me up. Y'all did not show up the day the bridge collapsed till after three o'clock in the evening and the bridge collapsed at nine that morning. My children, this is one of them, that night. This one here goes over that bridge every day. Her husband goes over that bridge every day. My son came over that bridge right that day before it collapsed the day before when they shut it down. But respectfully, y'all did not close that bridge down. Our volunteer fire department did. They did. Am I right? They did. Now, another thing is, I got a question. If this bridge is repaired, if it's got a band-aid put on it again, in that four years, what's gonna happen if this girl here is coming across and there's a storm coming in and she's coming across from her job, which is 168 miles a day from here, in a storm and TRA opens the gates and we're flooded, that's my next quest is TRA. Uh, and that bridge collapsed and my daughter passes away. Are y'all gonna be responsible for her death or who? So I can't speak about possible hypothetical. There's no way of knowing what's going to happen in those four years while we're led in this project. So, so again, like I mentioned before, adding those those spans is not just building a road at grade, it's actually building a bridge. So we are bridging to help with the issues that we are seeing. And like I mentioned before, we're going to continue monitoring this. And like I said, when I started speaking, this is just a temporary solution. I cannot make this a permanent solution. Unless I were to span the whole entire road of 787 right now, and what that ends up doing is it damages every property uh, downstream from that. Okay, so one more question. What is the upside of, I mean, we've been without the, we've been without a way to get to Cleveland since May. What is the upside, you're saying four months to build a temporary bridge? I personally, this I'm being honest, I'm not going over that temporary bridge. I'll continue to drive around, right? Because if y'all couldn't get it right, if you couldn't get it right, if you couldn't get it right in three years and this happened, what's four months gonna do? Number one. Number two is, in 22, it was said in y'all's paperwork, and I know you weren't here. And I, I was here in 22. I, okay. It was, it was stated we needed a new bridge. What I'm hearing, the money was allotted for a new bridge. The ball was dropped no, when they repaired the no, bridge, patched it. That is not true at all. What so is I'm what part of that? You know, I don't know where that statement that you're mentioning came from. Uh, there was no money, has been no money, allocated for a new bridge at that location. That is the reason why we're doing what we're doing right now. So, so are your bridges insured? <coughs> no. Do the bri are, are the bridges are insured? No, ma'am. They're not insured? No. Okay. Bridges are not insured. But you did get money from FEMA for emergency funding. 
That's how we paid for the repairs that happened from our group. That allows us to pay for these repairs that happened during from 18 to 21. That's how that money got funded back. So there is no there is no pot of money that was just sitting there waiting for a bridge to be built. There is nothing. Again, that's where I'm trying to help with with any misunderstandings or misconceptions. There is no pot of money that's just sitting there waiting for this bridge that I've just been sitting on not wanting to do a bridge. That's not what's happening here at all. So I don't know, I would love to know where you got that information. I will gladly give you my that's card why and you we're can visit with the, me on that's that. That's why we're having this meeting. Absolutely. Right. That's exactly why we're having it, to exactly. get it from y'all. Then if it's not done, we know who to come to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, so we got a lot of other people. I, Sarah, you're probably going to take too much time with the mic, so just I can hear them just fine. Let me just talk a little bit of context. <clears throat> 3,000 computers, uh, 265 days, it's a normal work year. It's $40 million out of our pocket. That's the reason for a little bit of frustration, I'm sure. You spent $6 million already. You said uh, uh, 10. Uh, 10 or 11, I guess it was 12 earlier today. So 40 million plus 6 million, 46 million, plus 10 million, it's 57 million dollars. According to Google, a four lane freeway, four lanes here, four lanes there, two service road, two service road lanes here, two service road lanes there, and an overpass is 36 million dollars. I fail to see the return on investment for these temporary fixes. You're going to do what you got. What you got to do, and I don't hold it against you. You got it. it government is government. And that's what it's going to do. The problem that I have is I want to know who not to vote for, and I, I want to. I want to, I want to uh, you know, use people, use representatives to work here to find out who we do need to vote for, so we can get a fix and a return on investment. And so, that's not one and a half times the, the 69 freeway that they're building out there for a month. And I hope that puts a little bit of context. And I'm not frustrated with you. Well, these people are really not frustrated with you or your staff. You got to, you got to work with the, with the tools you got to work with. You're doing the best you can. So I, for one, appreciate that. But uh, I, I don't want to spend my money. And $40 million is, is not chump change to us who live out here in the country. Appreciate your comment. So one thing that I will say, um, so with regard, hang on, Sarah. Oh, hold on. So with regards to the comment you made that we spent $6 million and now $8 million, we were going to award that contract and I canceled it. So I haven't spent a single dime to do any other work. I am again waiting to for this combined project because again, some of the things that the decisions that I have to make as a district engineer is to recognize whether, what are my options? And because I understand and the, the, the thought of, you know, you're spending taxpayer money and I get all that, it's. Yeah. Yeah. All right, can you hear me? All right. So the gentleman over here that spoke about the eastbound side, it, after it was completed, it started to collapse on the eastbound side. 
before before y'all even opened or right after it opened up and started. This is during construction, right? Right. So my concern is after you do the temporary fix, I think part of the reason why it started collapsing is because we have these oversized 18 wheelers with all the traffic of uh, oversized loads. Lots and lots of traffic going on. I'm worried about on the temporary fix, are y'all gonna put a weight limit on that bridge to alleviate all the traffic from 18 wheelers? And check the weights. So, so we, we don't check weights. That's a DPS function. But as far as the, the weight restriction on that, um, I, I will follow up with, with our, our bridge folks to see there is no weight restriction on that particular bridge, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, that's one of the reasons why also, as opposed to doing the, uh, the at grade, like, like it was, like we mentioned that it was kind of sinking in, doing, doing the bridging is what helps with the, the columns, the, the beams, and the, the actual bridge deck to help sustain some of those weights. The well, only thing is, what I'm worried about is, I feel like that the oversized trucks help it with the issue that we have now. And I'm worried about a temporary fix causing even more of an issue. I think what he's saying is he's getting blocked. I think what he's saying is getting blocked. I know that overload. I mean, without a doubt, I know that That's what he's saying. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, we have county commissioner up there. If he could maybe send some, try to get some patrols out here, maybe tech Scott out or DOT out here to do, you know, weight control. They used to do it up there at the plant all the time when those trucks were coming out of the plant. Right. So what we what we can definitely make sure is that, and uh, and we'll get with our staff on that as far as like finding what the the actual weight limit is on this particular road and uh, on that bridge and what it will be once we're done with the construction. And uh, if there is, so the thing is that if there's ever a weight restriction needed on a bridge, we we'll post it. That's why the reason why we have those load ratings on, if you're familiar with some other locations where we have it, because some of those bridges are, you know, they can only handle so much weight. So that's the reason why we have those particular signs. So if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, require one of those signs, then, then we don't place them because they're built to be able to withstand some of those weights. So once y'all started seeing on the east side, started seeing the, the ground started to, to collapse a little bit. I mean, at that point, someone should have came out there and said, hey, look, maybe we got too much heavy load going across here that will cause more of an issue. That so you would be okay driving on a road that can't handle an 18 wheeler is what you're saying. No, what I'm saying is those loads are so heavy and you've got 200 trucks going down that road every day. That's Why don't they just build a temporary load. fix to sustain them loads? That's what they're doing. That's, that's what they're doing. doing. That's, I mean, but I'm, I'm, I'm addressing him. Say again. Okay, uh, real quick, a couple of quick things. First, thank you for the temporary fix. I will take it. Um, I. I'm very involved in my church. Eight miles has turned into 43 miles, uh, so I will take it. Um, the other thing was, I'm a visual person, and I know you keep saying moving it to the north, and I've heard this over and over and over. I cannot for the life of me figure out where you're going to move it. Is there any way that you can try to do, and I know it's just contingent on so many things, can you do a visual map and maybe give it to Vanessa? She can put it on Blue Bonnet, Bonnet well, News. We're not, we're not doing that right now because, okay. again, after, after we get the results in October for the geomorphology study, then we can actually pinpoint what, uh, where we're gonna place it. The reason why I'm not prepared to share that kind of information right now is because as soon as I do something like that, somebody's gonna say, well, Martin Gonzalez said that's where the bridge was gonna be, and now he changed it. That's not what we're about to do right now. Again, we have to do our research. I, so that's why I wanna stay away from something like that. Through the public involvement process, we will get to that point where you have an opportunity to see where we're gonna be placing the bridge. So. And that's when we start doing that, that kind of information as far as like everybody getting to see what the project is, what we're gonna be doing at that location and, and all that additional information. So. Yes, all right, so I do understand everything you have said so far and I also take the temporary solution. However, um, I would think that in accordance to what the other gentleman said, uh, we should be protected as a disaster area 
and the, uh, not the temporary, but the permanent solution should have been taken care of a long time ago. So after four months, it's barely beginning to take place a temporary solution, and then we're still looking for another four months to go, which doesn't seem much as, of an, as an emergency solution, like you keep saying, that it's an emergency uh, solution, but you know, we still have to wait another four months, doesn't seem as, as much as an emergency. However, my main concern, and I think uh, uh, the concern of many people around here, it's also the money that is costing us. Um, eventually, after all these uh, expenses that are going on, we don't want to see an increase on taxes because these new projects have been taking place. As it is, it's already taking, a, I'm already spending about 30 to 40% on gas every week. And if you add that up on the time that it all started to the time that we're looking forward to do, it's, it's, good. it's a lot of money. And I know you might not be representative of this um, branch of the county, but I would think it would be you guys have more of the power to intervene as us getting a, some sort of break and instead of an increase in the future, a, a sort of break on the taxes or whatever program that can help us reimburse the money that we're spending. Because uh, if I was spending already uh, $400 on gas to get to where I have to go to work, now I'm spending 700. Now do you add that up and nobody's gonna give us that back. We cannot get it back from anywhere else. So that is part of my concern here that I, that is lacking my family from other things. I'm coming short on many other things so I can cover all that gas of having to go around. So, and like you said, it's y'all working on, a, on an emergency solution, but again, four months to me is not much of an emergency. An emergency would be two weeks after it all started, and it will be actually more beneficial if you were working already in a permanent solution. Because that temporary breach or whatever y'all do collapses in three months after you build it, you are gonna come back and say, well, that's why I say it's temporary. That's why I say it wasn't permanent. That's why I say this wasn't the real thing. And that seems to me like a forever excuse going on and on. So what I'm asking is that you, as a branch of the of the county or the region. I'm state, I'm not county. Well, I, I would think still that you have more the capability of communicating with whoever is in charge of taxes and whoever is in charge of knowing that we are spending a lot more money, that it's only benefiting the gas companies. Yes, sir. I appreciate the comment. Now, as far as like like what I mentioned before, we when this happened and what you're referring to that doesn't seem like an emergency again, uh, my folks have to design things. They can't just throw something up there because that, again, what ended up happening, like I mentioned too, when we saw the additional cracking that started developing on the on the east side of the bridge. And then when, when the erosion kept happening with the Trinity still being as high as it was, then it undermined the, uh, that vent where it settled. So, so again, if, if we would have let that contract at that particular time, and that's why I made that decision to, to cancel that contract and then make sure that we, we, comp we covered both sides of it, it would have been possible that once they started working on that west repair, that that, that portion as the crew started getting on with their equipment, that that could have settled in. And that could have been worse for the bridge itself. So that's the reason why with constant monitoring that we were doing is why we went ahead and, and, and paused that. So, because I didn't want any loads to be on that particular bridge at that time. So again, we were gonna do the, the temporary repairs, um, expecting to last four months to get it done. And yes, that's again the reason why I'm saying, I know that, that the comment has been like, well, you couldn't do this right in three years. Why are you gonna, how am I gonna feel confident over four months? Again, when I'm before with the repairs that were done in the past, they didn't use precast elements. They didn't use high, high uh, early strength concrete. We're doing that now. That's what allows us to expedite projects. When you use conventional items, that's what makes projects go 12 months, 18 months. We're trying to use things that are gonna make this go faster. That's the reason why. And also, when we talk about options and when we talk about how much it's costing the taxpayer, the option is always, I don't do anything and I keep working on the long-term solution. But that's not responsible because then that's gonna keep y'all driving 40 miles out of the way 
for years. And so my goal is to try to get that open as quickly as I can. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. I want to go back to what my neighbor was talking about. Communication to us. How are we going to do it that's going to be reliable and that we're all capable of? If y'all would be so kind as to mail it to us, your Facebook page, your Instagram, your however y'all want to communicate, that's what we need. This is fabulous, but we can't have a meeting like this every three or four months. We really need to stay in contact with y'all's little bit of information, whatever it is at the time. So as we do move forward, you know, we won't have so many questions. Okay, so what I'll, I'll tell you what, what we'll do moving forward. Um, thank if, you. If, thank you, ma'am. If, if we would, let's make sure that we get all your, whether it's email or whatever your preferred method to be contacted, and we will start providing, Tanya will provide monthly updates on the status of our emergency maintenance contract as that goes forward, okay? So, thank you. Uh, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. I know that these were extraordinary circumstances and our floods have been terrible lately, but what is the uh, schedule for inspecting all the bridges in Liberty County? Because I sent an email one day asking about the inspections and the next day there were crews out there shutting down 105 and what, what is the schedule for inspecting the bridges to make sure that there are no more issues so anywhere else? Are on a two-year cycle two years. To, to get inspected and then so we have inspectors and then we do also off years um, but every time that we get like a major event like this we send our crews out to look at those to see if we if we see any additional scour at some of these locations so this particular bridge was actually inspected in March of this year. So that's when that, this bridge was, was inspected. And at that time, it was still found sufficient with, with everything that the condition, because we score bridges from zero to nine, uh, nine being the best. And this was at a five at that particular, particular time overall. So, um, and again, so that's done on a, on a two year cycle. Yes, ma'am. So we don't release those things because of the information that it has for you know for safety reasons because we can't have anybody un unfortunately time. terrorism and things like that to have information on our bridges. Yes, ma'am, right here with the microphone. Oh, hold on, sir. She's she's trying to ask a question. Okay. Um, the the new bridge or our temporary bridge is fine. Okay, we've got this built. Okay, what's the guarantee that the first storm's not gonna take it out? So there, so what we're gonna be is right back in the same position because this is uh, a good friend of mine did a lot of research on this and he sent this to me and he said, uh, may I suggest that you do adopt as part of your new bridge plans that you request TRA to begin a pre-release program or a program at Lake Livingston Dam because under the current rules and regulations for operating the Lake Livingston Dam, the TRA has the ability to damage or to wash away any bridge downstream of their spillway. It is my understanding that the maximum release rate could be as high as 360,000 CFS and total failure of the spillway or dam. If TRA looks at our current spillway and dam and repair cost from the May to June 24 maximum release rate of 124,400 CFS, they might listen and talk seriously because release rate above 100,000 CFS beats the heck out of the fall apron and the adjustment adjacent structures to pieces. A release program should also reduce our operation and maintenance cost. Ask the TRA for their current repair costs for all the heavy rip wrap, uh, clay dirt, 
pumped concrete down 20 to 35 feet below the surface and dozer and other equipment time. So we, we need to find a way to work with TRA that they don't just dump all this water on us at one time. They need to lower the, the river, the lake before these storms. They know the storm is coming. Releasing it early would take a toll, uh, a, would help take a toll off of the, everybody below that dam. But they have no respect for anybody below that dam. All the people up there don't want their lake lowered because of their bass tournaments. <laughs> Any other questions right there? I did answer that question, sir. With regards to the Acro Bridge? He missed the answer. Okay. So the Acro Bridge is something that we looked at initially to be able to just span over that where we lost the approach slab. And as we started seeing... I didn't catch Acro or whatever it is you're saying. It's Corps of Civil, Corps of Engineers, okay? I, I'm not following your question, sir. He didn't sir. know what Acro was. was. Corps of Engineers the Corps of Engineers doesn't build my bridges. That's my staff. It would explain a disaster. The Corps of Engineers doesn't have anything to do with our bridges, sir. So what he's asking that's, is, that's something. does the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers, are they going to oversee your job? No. 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 no, they don't oversee our jobs. Okay, can I give a suggestion that I found out today? Yes, ma'am, there's still others asking questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ms. Mark, for being here. Today, uh, you know, I spoke, uh, you thought they had approved a 90-day solution for temporary back in June or something, and then I called you a month ago and said, no, I guess it was more of a problem. Uh, I, I guess... Is there any economic relief that these people here that are paying thousands of dollars a month to pay for gas and are losing business because of the bridge, is there any way we can get reimbursed, you know, to have a, a normal life as we had before? Uh, and I appreciate you really being here, but it's causing a big hardship for a lot of people here. Yes, sir. I appreciate the question. And I think, uh, we, uh, we have received that question before, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, our staff had, uh, there's like a FEMA site or something like that, that we'll be happy to share with y'all uh, to, to send you what it is that, because I think this whole entire area qualified, and I think somebody mentioned that earlier, uh, qualified under FEMA for the hardships. So that's something that I think y'all can reach out to and, and apply for that type of assistance. Um, I, I have nothing to do with FEMA, ma'am. I am textile, okay? so. Absolutely. And, and that's the reason why, so, so when, when we visited about that, you're absolutely right. Initially, the, the first estimate was 90 days. And as we were in the process of awarding this, is when, if, when my staff went back out there and looked at it, and they saw that the additional cracking on the east side is why I stopped awarding the contract so that I could get that combined. And that's why we called the bridge division or our maintenance division. That's why I asked our special jobs crew to go out there and look to see if we could make those repairs ourselves so that we could go ahead and expedite these repairs. And then it, in the process of doing that is when that, that interior vent that I mentioned, that's when it settled uh, additionally. So you can see that, that first, uh, that part of that dip that's uh, in that interior vent, it, it looks like it dipped a little bit. So we, we had to make adjustments to our design to make sure that, that we fix all of that with these repairs. So that's what, that's what made that change. But, uh, but with that, like I said, once we get it awarded, and uh, I'm, I'm looking to early September, I'm hoping that right at the beginning of September, I get a contractor already turning dirt. And once we do that, like I said, with uh, weather permitting and 
if we're able to do it within 120 days or sooner is what we're looking at. Excuse me for just a minute. Uh, I'd like to say something here. And we've got it's time for a few more call, uh, questions. But first of all, I want to thank them for coming because what they're trying to do is they're trying to enlighten us as to what their, what their plan is to do. What has been done in the past is in the past. It has nothing to do with this, this, this man and these crew here now because they, they inherited this problem. So we need to be thankful and, and be respectful for them because they are trying to help us. And so with me saying that, we got time for enough for a couple more questions. And then I'd like to, we got a couple of them back there that they've been holding their hands up. Uh, that they have a question, but after that, uh, thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Sumter. My question is more for the judge, I guess. Is there any way that you can recoup any of the money for the past contractor, shout sh the job? The contractor was a textile contractor, sir. That had nothing to do with the county. Yes, sir. Sir, again, I can't speak for the decisions that were made prior to me getting here. I can't speak to any of those things, but we're doing our best to, to move forward now. No. Again, our goal is to have it done in 120 days. Yes, sir. Okay, I feel the need to comment, and uh, I'm sorry that so many people left before I had a chance to say this. I don't know any of you guys here, so don't let anybody mistake me for a shill, but what I am is an independent inspector of 25 years experience with a global reputation, and I've worked on many of the largest engineering projects in the world. I came here tonight because I wanted to hear your appraisal of the bridge, because I went down to the bridge, took a look at myself, and the evaluation that I made of the bridge, and I have told other people, some of whom may have been in this room tonight, precisely matches your evaluation. So this man deserves some credit for telling us the truth about this bridge. Um, not only that, the time frame concerning the replacement of the bridge, I find to be accurate from my knowledge of having been involved in many of these projects. Now where I am a little bit skeptical is your time frame on the temporary repair. Yeah. that's pretty optimistic but feel absolutely free to prove me wrong on that <laughs> and if this man manages this that's going to be quite an impressive feat of engineering so some of the negativity I've heard here I felt like I needed to at least from my professional perspective you know, make a truthful comment as somebody who is in the business so that maybe I can provide a little more understanding here and one of the difficulties on a project like this is that there are many, many steps that need to be gone through. These guys are going to have to do soil sampling. They're going to have to do engineering and foundations, land acquisition, and possibly litigation will probably be a big part of that. And that's before they even let a single contract or even begin their engineering. So just want to. Thank you, sir. Look. Appreciate that. Uh, we've got time for one more. One more comment. Uh, what's your confidence level once the temporary, I was looking at the time span from the, the temporary, and he's talking about the future of the permanent, the permanent bridge. So once we get this, the temporary bridge up, right, in four to five months, or whatever the time frame, what's your confidence level that's gonna hold more than a year? So I, I can't predict, that. if we get like a Harvey type mm -hmm. scenario, I don't know what the bridge is going to do. I don't know what the river is going to do because, again, the, the river wants to go straight, right? Mm -hmm. So as we see, like I know you were mentioning earlier, you're a visual person, right? So, so am I. So like I'm going to turn around like I'm uh, doing the Trinity, okay? So we're, we're looking at the bridge right now. This is east. This is west. The Trinity comes right here down north to south. The trestle with the railroad is like way up here. And it goes north to south here. And then it does a hard bend. 90 to the left to the west and then it comes comes hard 90 down south that's where our bridge is right now right so so from that standpoint then it come kind of comes to a a southeast direction 
And if you look at the banks on either side, the sand that's been like that, it went from the 50s to now, it's migrated over in that, in that way, right? And that's what we were talking about, that that's something that has happened over 40, 50 years, right? So at that location where I said here, where we have the bend, we have our bridge right here, right now, we would be going up here where it's going north to south. So avoiding all this, this flow, the jump, the friction that you're seeing, because the water is going to just, you know, hit those walls, if you will. This is going straight. So there's a lot less resistance. So that's why we wanted to put the bridge right there. The, the No, it'll still come like right around Rome air is where it makes that, that turn now. It'll kind of go straight ish at that area. I say straight ish because again, I, I'm not like designing it right now, but it's close. No, the reason, reason I was bringing that up because I, we spend like, it's gonna be like 40 million or whatever the, the fee is for the, for the repair for the temporary bridge. And I hate to see us spend the 40 million for a temporary repair in, it lasts only a year and a half. It's we, not 40 we, million. We, what, what is it? It's not going to be 40 million. Okay. If somebody, it was 40 million, I guarantee you we wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So it's not 40 million dollars. Oh. Okay. So so again, it's a temporary. When I looked at the options, huh. I would be coming to you with a whole lot of different information if uh, if I was going to tell you the price tag was going to be 40 million dollars. Uh, that would not be temporary whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, you know, we're, we're gonna work on that and we're gonna continue monitoring that. That's the reason why we're adding those spans to help in future rain events and flood events that come like that, that will help handle some of that scour that we're gonna be experiencing with those events. And will, uh, are you, uh, is the county uh, getting any money from the in infrastructure bill that was passed by the government early on? Are we gonna get some of that funding? Because it was a big, it was a big deal in the news. By they passed this big infrastructure, infrastructure bill, and it's supposed to be in for bridges and things of that nature. And I was seeing, uh, someone was saying, we tried to get some money from Houston, uh, HK, Harris County Council. And so I know there's some money out there, but I don't know how will we be able. To, I'm not into politics, so I don't know how that is run to get that money. But if some money out there, I think we should get it. And and the sooner we get the bridge up, it will alleviate us. Cause it, it, like the guy over there was talking about, I spent a lot of money on gas to get to work. Right. I'll make one little comment yeah. here. Judge Knight is, is uh, over HCAC, or he works he works every month. I mean, he's, he's got more money in the last few years from HCAC out of, than we've got since I've been here. Okay. Get some more money. So we're working on it. We're working on it. And one of the things is, kind of, if I'm going to understand this right, this is not exactly a, a patch. Y'all are adding two sections to the bridge on each end. It's not. You're not just patching. Right. You're adding. You're adding to the bridge on both ends, which should get us past a lot of the erosion problem. Yes, sir. All right. So. So, ma'am, so we have a whole lot of questions that have been asked. Uh, so, again, like uh, like Pastor said, we had time for just a couple more questions. So, I got these two gentlemen right here, and go ahead. Okay, I got a question. You're going to pass this bridge. You're going for the new bridge. Yes, sir. Okay. What are you going to do with that bridge when the new bridge gets put in? Well, more than likely, well, it depends on what, what we end up doing, but more than likely, with, with it not being needed, we would take it out. Because it still has, you have to get access to that Daniel Grant Road and a few other places. The, the, the access would be there for any property that's there, but the ability to cross at that location, that, that, would, that bridge would no longer need to be there because yeah. the, the, the bulk of the traffic wouldn't need it. So we would remove that bridge. The access to the Daniels and to the Morris property on the on the other side that would still remain. But but as far as the the crossing back and forth at that bridge, that wouldn't be available. Yes, sir. So so Martin and Judge Knight. I, I'm 
I'm going to throw you a grenade, but a softball. I, I don't know if it's. I don't know which one I want to catch. I, I don't know if it's going to be one or the other. <clears throat> but and the, the lady here is, is is kind of teasing this out, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I'll just put it this way: Does Pex Dot have? And I, I grew up in Liberty. I've run up down the Trinity River my entire life. The flood of '94 happened. All of us remember it. And when I was in high school in 2001, working at Sherwin Williams. People were still coming in to buy paint and, and, and sheetrock to repair their homes from you know literally seven years before, right? Coincidentally, and you know my, my mother here said, "Oh, we don't want to talk about the past. It's a grenade." I agree. Coincidentally, the bridge went in around the time that the Lake Livingston Dam was constructed. That's not a coincidence. And all of us that have lived along the river, high and low, south of the dam, have seen flood events incur an increasing number and extreme so my question to you and i really i'll kind of throw it to the to those of you on, on the, the floor not just just you martin but does the county or text dot and i realize they're two separate entities right and we've all said that when government takes a long time to do anything because it's a lot of permissions yep get it. everybody has their own separate policy and charge and they're not all alike right and it fully appreciate that but at some level Lake Livingston Dam was artificial, it was man-made, and, and people in this room, myself, people all the way down to Anahuac and the coast, they point north and blame, we point south and blame, the locks aren't, you know, it, it, there's a lot of blame going around. What does it take, and or does, does let me put it this way, does TxDOT, those of you on the stage, have a position on whether or not the management of, I'm, I'm not gonna say TRA, but that's the elephant in the room, whether or not the management of the Trinity River north of us is lending to millions and billions at this point of dollars in damage south of us. Because in 94, it was, you know, mom and pops that paid for the damage to their homes. Now it's TxDOT. But in this case, we're TxDOT, as, you, as everybody in here, we're the taxpayer. But all of a sudden, the state is starting to feel the brunt of this. So is there a possibility, perhaps, that the right people are now in the room to start having those conversations with TRA to say, guys, from the from the dam all the way to the coast, there needs to quit being this finger pointing and pissing match, quite honestly, to work together because it's not those 18 wheeler trucks going across the bridge. It's the erosion of the water blowing out the pilot. I, we, we've talked, Martin and I've talked, y'all did an amazing job. I, I mean, I, I got a front row seat to the work they did two years ago. Y'all did such an amazing job that it is now blowing out land across the river that's never been touched. I mean, it's amazing how, but, but, but it's, it's man-made, right? It's diverting the river in a way that was never intended and, and Mother Nature is starting to, to kind of fight that battle and win. But a lot of background, a lot of words to kind of say or ask, is anybody in the room willing or does anybody have a, an official or unofficial view on whether or not management of the river really is what underpins a lot of the headaches that, that we've encountered for year after year, literally for now almost 60 years. Does anybody want to take a position on that? I want to comment on that. The management of the river is a problem, but they are addressing the problem with this new bridge by making an elevated bridge. And that's going to, that will address a lot of the problems, I think. And I don't know, I don't know anything. So I can't speak for TRA, like you said. But for textile standpoint, and our designers, what we do is look at, at the discharge, the hydraulic discharge that's gonna be coming through that location. We're gonna take all those things into account, what comes when they release, when they open those things. That's how we are designing our bridge to be able to accommodate something like that in the future. So when we do our design, we're gonna account for that type of changes in, in hydraulic discharge. So again, while I can't control what happens upstream of me, I'm going to make sure and we're going to make sure that our staff designs this structure in such a way that's going to be able to withstand those water coming through. It's going to take somebody higher up to get to deal with Trinity River Association. We've worked with them. And I don't know if Jenny's still here, but I mean, you know, they're, they're very influential person living in, in Artesian Lakes, former Harris County judge. It's like if the right people could get involved here. I can give you a little so, bit of insight on that. Yes, sir. Yeah, question of like, yeah. Here. You really want me to talk to yeah, this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
was. I got to get, keep myself from being pet to the corner. <laughs> well, you come from the whole family of legislators, okay? That's what it's going to take, the whole family of legislators. Uh, we had this conversation back in June, whenever the uh, same Center River went out of its banks and really tore its way through Kingwood and through its Oscacita. And then, of course, Liberty County got blamed for it because we were up upstream. But the real culprit was the management of the dam itself. And there's contracts with cities that the water in these reservoirs are provided. And they have to provide so many, I guess, acre feet per year or however they measure it out. Same Center River, just like the Trinity River, they have Same Center River authority. Trinity River has the Trinity River authority, okay? The dam is managed by the TRA. And they have a contract with the city of Houston to provide water. And my golly, they're gonna do it. The problem is you pre-release. Now, I've got a pretty good relationship with the Lord. I really do. But I can't tell him to make it stop raining or make it start or where he's gonna let it rain. And I will cuss a cow, but I will never cuss the rain. I'm gonna tell you that right now. But here's the big story. To get something changed about the management of the dam at uh, Lake Livingston or the dam at uh, Lake Conroe. The governor's already made it pretty apparent in the meeting that we were at in June. He was pretty ticked about it. And he said, we're gonna get something done. I have yet to hear what's gonna be done, but yet we're the receiving end, okay? Chambers County doesn't get what we get. We get it all even with the San Jacinto River inclusive. So let's see what happens. The session starts in January. We have a new state rep that's gonna be coming in. Turn her loose. Let's see what happens that way. But we can all join together and voice our opinion about the way the river's managed or the dam releases are managed as well. That's just the way it works. Yes, Government is slow. Sorry to say that, okay. So you're saying in February, we need to get a hold of Janice Holt's office. January. Yeah, well, February. She was I mean, yes, ma'am. She was here tonight, but she had to leave. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You can call me any time you want to. I'm going to answer the phone. But uh, <laughs> when, you get, when it comes to going to Austin, I think so. I think the pastor's ready to get us out of his house. So I, we had so much water in Liberty included. I mean, I know a lot of people don't travel in that direction as much as they might north, but. Mm -hmm. We talking about 90? Mm -hmm. 90 and 105? Yes, ma'am. 59 has a bridge over the Trinity. I mean, do I know you say during the rain and stuff, but like I have to travel all those. I work in Cleveland. I live over here. I don't, you know, I'm questioning, are they checked regularly? Because they kind of. Every two years, they inspect them those bridges. Again, it was inspected in March of this year, and it, it had a sufficiency rating of five. So, like I mentioned before, zero to nine, nine is the best, five was found sufficient. So, so again, if it has plenty of cover, okay. Yes, ma'am. So when we're looking at the bridges, and, and again, something, again, we could we could spend a whole lot of time talking about the problems that cause all the flooding, but there's, there's, there's logs, there's debris, there's beaver dams that are built, there's all this kinds of stuff that TxDOT has no control over because it's in private property. When those things happen and it causes those kind of backups and buildups, that's what causes a lot of flooding as well. So we have to deal with that as well as far as like, so you asked about 90. We switched traffic over to one lane so that we could have both both directions of travel. So we're trying everything we can to keep roads open as much as possible. 105, we we thought that we had a situation where where we needed to be shutting that down for, for any scour issues, so we sent our crews to go look at that. 
Where again, when I tell you all that, that our priority is the, the safety of the traveling public, that's what we do. Now, people may not believe that, but that's what we're doing. So, and, and, and I can't do anything about the opinion of people with what I'm trying to do in this district, but I'm doing the best I can to make the best decisions for every single county in my district. Martin. And that's just what I wanted to know. Yes, ma'am. Well, Martin, do you know what the ratings are of the other two bridges real quick? I don't have that information with me at this time. But okay. I'll be glad to get that for you. All right, thank you. I just want to thank them for coming. They, 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 they do do a lot of work to help us. Well, they, they inspect our county road bridges too. And they've, uh, they've replaced three bridges in the county and on the, we're on the bridge, one more, and they all happen to be in my precinct. <laughs> but we, uh, and we do appreciate that. That would have cost us $7 million that we didn't have if we to get to, we'd have had to close it. But thank y'all for being here. Yes. Yeah.